Well, you know, like everything, you have to uh, uh, progress. But along the uh, frequent service bus lines, other things, um, we're on sidewalks. We're on city or uh, county uh, uh, property, um, and we get to use that, and we don't get to do too much more with it. But the, the point is that I think we ought to look toward improving the pedestrian connections and the pedestrian uh, setting for all of our riders, wherever they might be. Uh, it is not. Um, we obviously the green line has been many many years in planning, um, and we are uh, obviously very excited by it. Uh, we also know that the economy, 12.4 percent unemployment in the state, the second highest in the nation, is affecting our payroll tax revenue, which is really what funds much of um, our service. And so uh, we are looking at uh, additional reductions on our frequent service, uh, heavily used lines of only. Here comes your train two to four minutes, but uh, uh, it has to, has to be a part of this bad economy and how we adjust to it. Well, obviously we want to be able to see uh, improvements on our bus service. They carry uh, two-thirds of our bus riders and it's uh, two-thirds of our total riders uh, and very important. That's what I commute on is the uh, is a bus. Uh, I use uh, uh, the light rail for meetings and other things, but my commute is actually on the bus. And yes, we do want to see. We want to see more frequent service lines. We want to see um, restoration of the even that uh, two to three minute reduction that we're uh, looking at for December to be able to be restored. Uh, those things are going to have to wait a stronger economy, but they are a part of what my plans are for the future of TriMet. <laughs> Well, not much yet since we're just underway, but I'm hoping that uh, by riding along today I'll get a better idea of what we can expect in terms of uh, service from TriMet when it comes our way. We've got a lot of learning to do between now and about five years from now when we finally open up. And I hope this is the first step of a process to make sure that uh, we handle it well. I think there will always be division in the community about that because different stops have different uh, merits and demerits, different routes the same way, uh, and it's a passionate community. They care a lot about uh, their way of living, and uh, some folks are very enthusiastic and some folks are real concerned. Our job on the council is to balance those as best we can.
there may, there is a huge debate going on in Washington, D.C. right now about what to do with the next transportation authorization bill. And I expect that that will be shaking out sometime this summer or in the fall. We are definitely in a hole economically. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that here in Oregon. The unemployment rate is over 12 and a half percent. But um, it's like having a two foot hole, two foot deep hole, and the federal stimulus money is enough dirt to fill it up to make it a one foot deep hole. So it doesn't eliminate the hole, but it makes it more doable for state and local government to, uh, to make up the difference. And, uh, to and, and, and these are challenging times. Well, I, the whole time that I've been in Congress, I've been uh, continuously for transit, whether it's uh, streetcars or light rail or buses in the various communities which I represent. Now, quite frankly, there's always going to be a shortage of money. Uh, it's like every other transportation that uh, uh, can't keep up with demand. And any place that I go in this part of Oregon, uh, people want more transportation, whether it's bus lines or access to rail uh, or uh, additional lanes and roads. <laughs> A lot of folks, and again, it shows the, the great benefit of long-term planning. Uh, the right-of-way really between the Gateway Transit Center and Foster Road was set aside in the early 70s, uh, in the mid-70s when the uh, I-205 freeway was actually developed. And it was actually a very long story and a long fought battle for many of the uh, uh, community members in East Portland. Who at the time were suspect about the freeway, but understood that it needed uh, uh, a transit component ultimately. It took a number of years, but it's uh, 2009, and we're going to get full advantage of that transit road. Including, interestingly enough, a tunnel that was actually built under the freeway lanes that moved the transit way from the east side of the freeway to the west side of the freeway, and that's near the Division Street. The shelters to be completed by the end of August. Um, there was a delay actually, we had hoped uh, through a design change to have a different rafter form than we ended up choosing. What we have right now is a very high quality stainless steel rafter. Um, but this, the installation is going very fast. They're going in at a pace of about six a week now. So people will begin to see them, and I think they're really going to appreciate them. Not only the openness and the quality of the design, but the interesting lighting scheme that goes along with them. Well, we actually have dramatically increased the number of shelters around the system uh, over the last four years, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, we've also added solar lighting to a lot of the shelters, particularly in outlying areas where it's not easy to electrify shelters. Um, so those, uh, and we intend to continue to enhance and grow our frequent service network, frequent service bus network over the next years. So our, our, uh, our focus on the bus side is service, service, service. And that's, I think, the bottom line is to make the service more frequent, more reliable, and higher quality. We're also looking at some opportunities for what we would call bus rapid transit light, which would be an opportunity to really do a much nicer job with some shelters, perhaps have communicate fare zones, as you see in some other cities around the country.